Hello, everybody. I am inviting you to join me a little bit to see this video about the pancreas. So the ultrasound evaluation of the pancreas in dogs. The first thing I would like to show you is a little bit of the anatomy. This is important when we are evaluating pancreas to remember what are the landmarks, where the pancreas is to try to find it more accurately. So here in this picture, we have the pancreas here in pink. And then we can remember that it has a relationship here to the portal vein. We can see the stomach here and the here pylorus duodenum. So we have the right kidney here, very close to the right lobe of the pancreas. And then on this other side, we have the spleen, the left kidney, the colon passing here very closely to the left lobe of the pancreas. So remembering these landmarks will be important when you're looking for the pancreas, okay? So it is a challenge. It is one of the most difficult structures to find in the normal dog. And we see that in the books, we see that on the articles. They are always talking about how it is a challenging structure. So if you're not finding it yet, have patience and it will get better. So the pancreas is an elongated and thin organ and it is divided into the right lobe, body and left lobe. So the landmarks, like I already said, are very important when trying to find the pancreas. If you don't see the pancreas in your examination, at least you looked through all the landmarks and you can make sure that you evaluated the area where you would find it if it was not normal. But the best thing is if you see it and measure it in all your exams. So since it's very close to stomach and duodenum, it is important that the animal is fasted to avoid the interposition and in artifacts caused by gas and food. So preparation for exams, specifically when we are looking for pancreas, is even more important. The abdomen is clipped, the, the fur is clipped, and acoustic gel is applied, and you should use the highest frequency uh, that you can. So usually for small dogs, you can go from 7.5 to 15 megahertz, and large dogs, 5 to 8 megahertz. So always scan the pancreas. Pancreas should be evaluated in every abdominal ultrasound examination. And you should pay special attention to it in cases where the patient presents vomiting, anorexia, weight loss, abdominal pain, icterus, therapy resistance, diabetes, and hypoglycemia. These are uh, those uh, with these signs, you should pay special attention. But like I said before, Try to evaluate pancreas in all examinations. It gets easier. It's much easier now with the machines we have, with the technology that we have available. In the past, they would say that it was hard to see normal pancreas. Now we know with all the equipment and probes and uh, higher frequency transdu transducers, we, we can see it in almost all exams. It can still be very difficult in some cases, especially in large dogs. The parenchyma, echogenicity, and echo texture of the pancreas is very similar to adjacent tissue. So you have to be very patient and try to find that line that is like a, the, the thin hyperchoic capsule to be able to see where the pancreas is. Uh, there are a few differences in cats and dogs. I'm not gonna get into too much detail here. But we know that in dogs, the right lobe is more easily seen. So in cats, we see the body and the left lobe more easily. In dogs, the duct is not commonly observed. And it can, the, the pancreas is connected to the intestine through the minor duodenal papilla, which is not easily seen in dogs. In cats, the ducts are commonly observed. And the pancreas is connected to the duodenum through the major duodenal papilla which is why we have a lot of problems in cats because the major duodenal papilla receives the pancreatic duct and the common bile duct. So the right lobe is the largest in the dog and it runs caudally in parallel to the duodenum. So I have an image here. You can see that I'm using a linear transducer, 
with the high frequency 10 megahertz. And if you pay attention, here's the wall. This dog was in dorsal recumbency and the transducer was basically on the right side, right side wall here. So this is the wall and you will be able to see the pancreas right here. Okay. So with the higher transducer, with linear transducers, it gets a little bit easier to find it. And I will show the same dog with a microconvex transducer for you to see the difference. Okay, so the right lobe, to find the right lobe, usually we can find the duodenum. It's going to be close to the right kidney and the pancreas is medial and ventral to the duodenum. Transverse image of the pancreas on the right side gives us a little triangular sh shape and close to the right abdominal wall and right kidney. So triangular lobe and it's isoechoic or slightly hypoechoic to the surrounding fat. And you could basically trace the right lobe to find the body and then from there the left lobe, which is not always so easy. So here is a transverse image where you can see it in a triangular shape right here. And then here I have the same pancreas, the same lobe with the linear transducer and with the microconvex transducer. So the, it's measuring about 0.65 here, 0.63 here, but you can see it with both. Right here is the right kidney, okay? The body of the pancreas was a little harder on this dog for me to find with the linear transducer, so I tried with the microconvex, but the pancreatic body is dorsocaudal to the pylorus in close proximity to the portal vein, so immediately ventral to the portal vein and common bile duct. So, like I said, I, I, I was able to get closer to the pylorus with the microconvex transducer because it was easier to position it. And then here's the duodenum. Right here is the closest I could get to the body of the pancreas. So liver over here, we already have the acoustic shadowing of the, the ribs and Right here would be the pancreas, the, the body of the pancreas. The left lobe is closely associated to the greater curvature of the stomach. It is usually seen, so between stomach and transverse colon, it is dorsal to the spleen and closely associated with splenic fertile vasculature. So here with the microconvex transducer, we see the spleen, you will see the stomach over here and a little bit of the left lobe. Stomach over here, spleen here, the colon kind of shows up over here, and here is the left lobe of the pancreas. One more time. Right here. And then with the linear transducer, it shows up, here's the stomach, it shows up right here, okay? So here measuring 0.8. I hope you liked this presentation. I hope it helps you find the pancreas. This was a video presented for the Veterinary Ultrasound Club. If you are more interested in it, you can go to our website. There is a waiting list for people who are interested in being part of the beta version of our club. It will be an international group where we will get together in a group to study and learn more and share cases. So I hope you liked it. See you on the next video.